Um, so welcome to the fifth session of Sierra Mini. And in this session, we'll just talk about a bit more about I squared C devices to understand how they work, um, because they are truly amazing, in my opinion. And yeah, let's just get started. So um, I've listed four common I squared C devices that might be useful when you are um, making your own robot. Um, the first two, um, it's included in the kit. It's the RGB light sensor, um, TCS34725 module. It has a extra, it has an address of hexadecimal 29. That means um, in decimal, it will be two times 16 plus nine. Um, and that is 41, I think. So that's the address. Um, we got the inertia measurement unit sensor and its address is hexadecimal um, 68, which is um, six times 16 plus eight. That is 104 in decimal. Um, and there is the humidity temperature sensor. Um, it's shown here. So it basically measures um, the ambient temperature and humidity. It is quite useful for simple projects such as like, say, um, weather detection or an automatic um, flower watering system, stuff like that. Um, and there is the 16 channel PWM servo driver, which is really um, a really useful one. Um, what it does is that just through, through the um, I squared C control, you can control up to 16 servos. Um, so if you, if you have a look at your Arduino Uno, um, it only has six PWM pings, and this board alone just uses two signal pings from the Arduino, can control up to 16 servos. And further, furthermore, it can, even, um, it can even be extended. So if you have multiple boards like this, you can stack them together to control um, more um, servo as long as you have enough power supply. I think this has a, um, you can have an external power supply for this as long as you have um, power supply and enough address to, to fill out. Um, because like, as you know, these two devices also have their addresses and they have to like, after you, you fill out all the address that you can use, you can't put more, but you can always just, there are always different methods to overcome these problems. But just using them alone is pretty powerful already. Um, so, all the I squared C devices that you use with Arduino, they are more or less the same. They are the two power pins, VCC and ground. And some of the devices use five volts while the others use 3.3 volt, uh, 3 .3 volts. Um, your Arduino can provide both um, voltages and some, some devices can use both. And those are the key pins um, that actually send the signal. Um, the first one is SCL. Um, for the clock ping, um, it's, it is also analog ping five for Arduino Uno and SDA is the data ping. It's A4 for Arduino Uno. Um, and that, that is true for your light sensor and um, accelerometer. So some basic terminology, transmitter. This is the device that transmits data to the bus. So by bus, um, I mean the two wires, um, SDA and SCL. And they are always at a state of high or low, they are digital. So they will always be five volts or zero volts. There is the transition, but for the, um, for the majority situation where we consider they are only at high or low. And there is the receiver, and that is the, the device that, reads, that receives data from the bus. So by transmits and receive, you can consider it as input or output because like if the Arduino is transmitting a data to the bus, that means that say you have a ping that's set up as um um you have you have it set up as digital write and it writes to the bus and it's a transmitter at this case. Cool. So and you got two types two types of devices, the master and the slave. So the master is the device that generates the clock. It starts the communication and it sends I squared C commands, and it also controls to stop the communication. 
and the slave is the device that listens to the bus and it is addressed by the master. So uh, it, will, it will get clear what those means um, in, when we move on. Um, first of all is how do you transfer data? So if you consider that you want to transfer a data to the, um, say, you, you want to um, transfer a data to the servo, you use PWM and it's an analog-like signal. You use that one ping for that data. But if you want to um, control so many um, servos, like 16 servos using that um, multi-channel servo driver, how does it achieve it? Um, this is the graph for sending one bit of signal. Um, how, it, how, how it works is that when transferring, each high pulse of the SCL corresponds to one bit. So this is SCL, it's the clock signal. Um, so it's always like, it always goes up. Um, so it always goes high, low, high, low at a regular interval. And whenever there is a high signal, you read from SDA. That means that um, if SCL is on high and SDA is on high, then you get, uh, you, you, it, it corresponds to one um, for that bit, bit. And if it's SCL at high and SDA at low, it corresponds to zero for that bit. And during the intervals when SCL is low, the SDA can turn from, um, from high to low or turn from low to high. So for example, you got a bit sequence of say 101. Um, that means that at the first pulse of SCL, SDA is high. And then when it goes through the transition, it goes from high to low because the next bit is zero. And then further on, before the, at the interval between the second and third bit, it goes from low to high again. So that would give 101. Oh, yeah, or high, low, high. Then you got the start and stop. So whenever the bus is free, both SDA, SDA and SCL are high. So when, when it's free, that means that no, there's no communication happening between the master and slave. When the master decides to start the communication, it will, um, it will pull the SDL to low. And whenever the and as SCL at free is at, is at high, the SDA gets pulled low. So that corresponds to a start because there is the transition happening when SCL is high. So when, when, tran when transmitting data, the SDA is not, signal is not supposed to change while SCL is high. So when, when, it's, when, when SCL is high and there is a transition happening, that means that it corresponds to start. Similarly, when SCL is high and you do a transition for SDA for going from low to high, it corresponds to stop. And in this way, you won't, um, you won't get mixed up. The start and stop condition won't get mixed up with, um, with, with signals. Like start and, and, and stop is a, like um, an indicator for communication to start and, and stop happening and it won't get confused in this way. And so, so it's stated here, when SDA goes from high to low, SCL is high, it signals, signals start. When SDA goes from low to high, SCL is high, it signals stop. If, this is, if you change SCL is low here, it, it's just like switching between the bits. And also remember that when transferring data, the SDA is not allowed to change when SCL is high. Yeah, um, so I mentioned that at the start. And this is uh, just a communication example. Um, the slave addresses, okay, so um, I mentioned that the slave address for, um, I, um, for the TCS, um, for the light sensor that you are using, and I gave the slave address of the um, inertia measurement unit that you are using and there are different slave addresses. So for the components you are com you are that's connected to the same um, same two um, um, I squared C lines, they have to have unique address. And that is because whenever the master wants to communicate, it has to specify the address 
of the, of the slave that it wants to communicate with. So usually for seven bit addresses, um, it's, it will allow up to 128 devices with unique address. And after each start, the, the first byte, so the first byte is eight bits. It will be the address of the slave to communicate with followed by a read and write bit. So for example, I want to communicate with the, uh, let's say, let's say I want to communicate with the light sensor. It's got the um, address of two, um, two nine, um, converted to, um, that converted to um, eight bits, it's gonna be um, two is zero, zero, one, zero, and nine is one, zero, zero, one. So um, that's just basic binary. With that in mind, and we know that we are using seven bit for, for, for it. Um, you will know that for the address, it's going to be zero, one, zero, that corresponds to two. Um, and for four to seven, it's going to be one, zero, zero, one. And we, we go through all of that for the address and we input a read write bit. What does read write bit means? So um, if you remember at the start, we had, um, um, there were two terms, there were the transmitter and the receiver. So if it's um, the, if the master wants to read from the, from the bus, that means that the slave address, like the further, the further data will be the slave, will be the slave device putting data into the data bus and the master receiving the data from the data bus. If it's writing, then the master will be writing, will be outputting the data onto the data bus while the slave, um, the slave device takes in that, um, um, that information from the data bus. And that's, that, that eight bit will be um, sufficient for the whole um, length of communication. So before the stop happens, um, it will always be um, it will always be that address and read or write um, signal. And this nine, ninth bit, which is a, um, a outstanding bit, uh, like after each byte of signal, um, it, it means a acknowledge bit. So that is for that is to prevent um, loss of information and to make sure that the devices don't get overloaded. So after each after each um, each byte of data, um, so you can say you can see each byte of data here. There's a knock acknowledgement. That is for the slave to uh, slave device to tell the master device that it it received the um, the data and it is ready to go on. If the master device does not receive an acknowledge bit from the slave device, it will stop sending data because um, and might end the session because the um, the slave device might have a different um, processing speed compared to the master device. So um, you don't want to you don't want to like say if the master process it, uh, master de device process it much faster. You don't want to overload the slave device, and also it's to prevent any loss of information because each byte has an acknowledged bit. So the mo like you will at, at most lose one byte of data, which is like, you won't really lose data by, by using this. Um, yeah, that's basically the uh, basics of I squared C communication. Um, it's, you, don't, you don't really need to know all of this because there are libraries to handle this, but I thought this is really quite interesting how you can control them and why does it appear that you are controlling? Because you might be thinking that I'm, I'm still communicating with only one device at a time. How do I control 128 devices at the same time? Um, so Arduino Uno has a clock speed of 16 megahertz. So if you are, so um, if you pull that frequency over 128 devices, you still get, um, what is it like 100k 
hertz per device, and that is sufficient for most of the devices. So it's just like you send signal to that one, and then you end the session and you send a signal to another device, and it looks as if it is controlling 128 um, device at the same time because it, um, if the clock speed is fast enough, it will just look um, look like look as if they are happening at the same time. And also some advice for before using an I2C device is that um, before you decide to use it, you need to check that it is compatible with the other devices that you are using on the bus. So in our example, the light sensor and the um, accelerometer, they are, have different um, they have different addresses, so they should be fine. And they will be connected in parallel to, to the um, I squared C pings, which is the SCL and SDA pings, um, A, A4, A4, A5. Um, and you also need to config, sometimes you need to configure the devices. For example, some of the devices, they have a range that they can take. Um, like that is, that, um, that is because that some devices you probably want um, identical um, slave devices on the same bus. For example, say you want you want four um, temperature sensors for some reason, and they are of the same brand of the same type. Um, they they might give you an option to um, um, to kind of change the address. Um, like you you might be able to give them uh, um, addresses from say by changing the. Uh, just 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 an example might not be real um say they have a um they can take address from um hexadecimal 72 to 75 so you want to make their addresses 72 72 73 74 and 75 so that they can work on the same um um same uh, under the same like on the same bus and yeah you might need to change with the registers um those will really depend on the on the actual device that you are using. So to do all of this, you need to make sure that you have access to the data sheet, um, because only through the data sheet sheet you are actually controlling the device. Like if you're using someone else's library, is is more like you don't really know what's happening inside. So you really want to make sure at least that you have access to the data sheet. Um, but like for our case, I didn't bother checking the data sheet. I'm just using two libraries for them. But I think this will be better practice. Yeah, so uh, that's really it, it because um, uh, I squared C is just like, it's just like something different from the previous things. And I just want to do it individually. And um, yeah, you can read more about it um, online um, because it's quite interesting. And for those who are doing engineering, um, they will be useful when you do the device programming in year two. Um, so it's just one of those practicals. And oh, uh, one thing new about, um, not one thing new, a notice here is that um, we've got this, I've got this box from Dyson Center and it's filled with stuff for Minibot. So, I think most of the missing components you can find here are loaded with some 3D printed parts tomorrow morning as well. Um, they are currently lying in my room. And there are screwdrivers, white tapes, um, some of the gyroscopes, um, the, um, the IMU, the, and I think there are some batteries there as well. So if your, your kit is missing any of them, just go and take one. Um, but it would be nice if you can just leave me a message on Slack or send me an email to tell me that you've taken one because I don't want like I, I, I don't want to be in the end that I just don't know who's got what and yeah, just being a mess. But leaving such a drop box, I think would be the best option at the moment. And if you got anything missing or broken, just send me an email and I'll try to get it, get one so I can put here. And yeah, so some of the groups have already done the soldering, I believe. Um, but if you haven't soldered the light sensor yet, as I've said, I, I gave you the option to do it yourself. Or if you are 
nervous about it, you can, like I can always do it for you. And to, to use the soldering station, you can just ask the technicians in Dyson Center and it's really quite easy. So yeah, in case you haven't done it yet, you won't be able to do the test for the, um, for the light sensor. So just try to do it as soon as possible, I guess. Yeah, that's it for today.